Coach Broncos are coming off a, a split at Omaha. Um, always a, a tough place to play. Um, and with the exception of a, of a rough second period on Saturday's game, pre pl played pretty well all weekend. Um, well, when we look at, at weekends where we split, we call them average weekends. Uh, it's a great weekend when you win both games. And uh, we've been getting used to being great over the previous couple of weekends. So uh, disappointing in the sense that uh, some average weekends where you lose the one game, you're into the game, and for whatever reason that night, and uh, your team doesn't have its legs, uh, it's just not playing particularly well. We played as good a hockey game as we've ever played on Friday night. Like it was 60 minutes of execution, moving the puck, competing. Uh, special teams were good. Uh, they did get a couple of power play goals, but overall the penalty kill was solid. Um, Saturday night, we probably had the best first period that we've had for quite a while, maybe this year. We outshot them 16-6. to 6. It was 1-1 at the end of the period, but we had legs. We were making plays where you're standing behind the bench as your coach, and you're kind of saying, who are those guys out there? Like, we're fast, we're moving, we're physical, we're dominating the game. And... Uh, we go out on the second period, and it's the complete opposite. Uh, we're turning the puck over at the start, and then all of a sudden we get into the the penalty parade that puts us in the box from the majority of the period. Four minor penalties and a five-minute major in the second period, and not a recipe for success. So um, came out in the third, played very well again, had opportunities, do score the tying goal. We have a few minutes left in the hockey game, and we don't win a hockey game 2-2. We also had a 5-1-3 and then a 5-1-4. So uh, a dip disappointing average weekend, and that's not uh, anything on Nebraska-Omaha. I mean, they're, they're a good team. I mean, they did what they had to do in that second period. They were going hard to our net. We didn't deal with it very well. And, uh, you know, we just have to be better than that. At this time of the year, we have to be better. We just can't settle for average. It's, it's not good enough. Take a break from conference play. RPI comes to town. Obviously, you can't earn any points in the standings, but the games are still crucial to, to where you stand in the national rankings. Well, uh, they're huge games this weekend. I mean, when we put our schedule together, the, the idea is to accumulate as many wins as you could. And with, by playing the icebreaker tournament, we were allowed two extra games. So we filled that with the RPI. And we're, we're, we appreciate the fact that they're coming here to play us right in midseason. But I know we're trying to get a couple more wins. We're trying to win on, on Friday night against an RPI team. And we seem to be catching teams when they're playing their best hockey. They've lost two games in the last nine that they've played. During that period of time, they beat Clarkson, who's rated number six in the country. And this past weekend, they went in, they played Dartmouth. And Dartmouth, on the pairwise, was number 20 going into the weekend they're not there anymore because RPI beat them on Friday night and they beat them bad seven to one so hard-nosed coach and Dave Smith I mean he was a fierce competitor as a player at Ohio State and then his pro career I mean he he spent a lot of minutes in the penalty box and played a real hard game so we can expect a team that's going to come in and and battle us and be well coached and uh, we need to be prepared for them so uh, excited about the chance to have RPI the only other time that we played RPI a number of years ago was in the Notre Dame tournament, and they happened to beat us that night, too. So right now, I'm 0-1 against RPI. Calendar switches to February. Not like everything throughout the season isn't intense, but you start to see the finish line a little. How do you like your team's mindset this far into the season? Well, our team was disappointed after the game on Saturday night. Uh, they realized that uh, we had energy. Uh, we had our game going. And we just did some things to, um, you know, allow Nebraska Omaha to beat us. I mean, uh, we, we beat ourselves in a, in a lot of ways. And you just can't allow that to, to happen. And uh, our guys were disappointed, which was good. Well, that's good to be disappointed about it. But do something about it when you can. Don't wait till after the game. So, uh, I mean, our mindset, uh, we got back yesterday off the road trip, had a quick meeting in the dressing room and talked about, the importance of RPI and what a tough opponent it was going to be. It's going to be a great atmosphere again here. And, you know, our job is to go out and try to win that next hockey game. And we do that by playing with intense, consistent effort on, on an every puck basis. 
I don't know if you rank your lines, but you know certainly one of the top ones, if not the best one, has been the Rushoff Allison DiPietro line. To see Rushoff get a goal for the first time in a while, I know the assists have been there, but to see him score one is that something that can help a guy get going, even when he's playing well. I, well, that, that's a good point. I mean, Austin Rushoff has been playing well, and it's it's details away from the puck. It's his compete level. I mean, he had a season high for our team on Friday night of five steals. He was on top of uh, the Nebraska defense and was stealing pucks and making plays. Uh, made a real good play on the Red Kingston goal at the start of the game, getting the puck towards the net, and then obviously got a big power play goal that tied the hockey game in the third period, like tied the hockey game in the third period 2-2 which we proceeded to go up and give up, go out and give up that league. But Austin's been playing hard. It was great to see him get rewarded for a goal. He's a guy that can certainly put the puck in the net. And, um, but the key thing for him is to follow the process, continue to do individual things well, and the offensive numbers will follow you. I know you talked at length about uh, RPI, but I'm just wondering, when, when you mix the non-conference with the conference games, any advantage or disadvantage that you see to that? Uh, I mean, it's a non-conference game, but uh, as our players know, every game is in college hockey. You don't know which game may be the game that gives you a chance to be in the national tournament. And I don't know, care who you're playing. It, it could be that individual game that makes a difference, and that's the way we have to approach it. I mean, every game is important, and certainly this weekend at home, here at playing RPI, we got to be ready to go when that puck's drop. Andy, you're playing an East Coast team. You don't see an East Coast team too often. Do you see a comparable style to the teams that you play, or do they have uh, something that uh, maybe stands out that they do well? Well, uh, you know, our staff has been busy working on video work here all morning, and, and we got to look at them again yesterday on the trip back from Nebraska. But, um, you know, we were focused on Omaha this weekend. I mean, they're, they're a hardworking team. We can see that. They've got great structure to their game, and, they got some energy right now. Like, uh, you know, they're enjoying winning. And, you know, Dave Smith's done a great job of getting that program going in the right direction there. So I don't know if it's different, Robin. We'd have to watch them a little bit more. But certainly based on the games that we saw, they're going to play us hard. Um, there's just going to be some physicality here. We're going to have to be in control of our emotions. We're going to have to use our speed. And, and they're going to try to jam us. They're going to try to get up on top of us. And it's a great challenge for us. Um, I, I don't know, uh, you know, our, our game out west here is intense and fast, and, you know, that's the way their team's playing right now. So um, it's more of the same. And, Coach, you got a decor that's really contributing offensively right now in the last few games. Uh, defensemen have been chipping in with a goal uh, here and there, and that's nice when you've got the forwards that you have, but you start adding in this defense, scoring goals for you, that really helps out even though their number one focus is to keep it out of your net. Well, we, we remind them of that fact all the time, too, that we got to keep it out of our net. And, you know, we turned a couple of pucks over that hurt us against Omaha. But, you know, we, we've wanted that, Robin, all year to get our D up involved with the play. I think now that we've got our forward units kind of set as we're moving along here, there's more symmetry between the forwards and D. And, you know, Coach Versweiler's in charge of our offensive play, and he's been really – encouraging that defenseman to jump up in that middle lane, make sure we've got four guys in attack. Teams play so well now, Robin, defensively, and they're back, and you can't catch them in outnumbered situations like three-on-twos, but you can get some four-on-threes. And then the other thing we've asked our D to do is to be a lot more active in the offensive zone in terms of cycles, in terms of you know being able to move cut inside and shift across the top of the blue line, get off the blue, get off the boards real quick, get your lateral mobility going and find that net. And if you can't find the net, rim it back down, we'll hang on to it or shoot it off the end board so it bounces in front. And we've been working a lot with our D-men on getting involved offensively for sure. So Austin, Coach Murray told uh, Omaha's radio guy, he told CBS, and he's made it a point to mention that you seem to be the key to the success of your line with uh, Wade and, and Dawson. You know, how does that make you feel confidence-wise, and then what do you contribute uh, with that trio? Yeah, it's a huge confidence booster. Um, you know, I think I contribute, you know, getting on the four check. Um, you know, credit's not all toward me. It's to Wade and Dawson. You know, they make great plays, and um, they're scoring the most. So uh, they're obviously doing something way better than I am. But um, just getting on the four check, that's what we've been hounding on. 
Um, and uh, I think that's the key to our success. I don't know about way better, but to see one for yourself go in the net there on Saturday night, just in general, how much confidence does that give you? How good do you feel about that? That was good. Uh, it's been a while, um, but you know that always gives you good confidence going into this week. Um, looking for a few more. You guys have played so well, you know, lately that I imagine there's, you know, it has it's been so long since you lost that feeling. Does it? Make it harder when you've coming off a win streak to lose a game like that. Yeah, it's always tough, but you know you, you got to know that you just came off a five-game win streak and you could easily just do it again. What gives you confidence? You can do it again. What's what do you like about this group I, right now? I think this past game we we beat ourselves up with the penalties in the second period, and I think uh, if we didn't take those penalties, we would have gave ourselves a really good shot to win that game. You play a, a team in RPI that is obviously not in the NCHC. Uh, first and foremost, what challenges do they pose? And then secondly, what's it like going from conference to non-conference this late in the season? Uh, we, we've done it before. Um, it's a little different. Uh, you know, nothing that we we're going to watch a lot of video on them. I don't know much about them, but I know this week we'll be watching a ton of video on them, and we just got to outwork them. Getting back to your line, Coach mentioned that you had five steals on Friday night. And then you have a guy like Dawson, who's such a pest for the opposing team. What is it like to see those other two guys kind of work around with you when you guys are, in, you know, hounding on the forecheck? It's awesome. Uh, you know, if I'm not, if I'm late coming back, I know Dawson or Wade is, is going to be up pounding their D, giving them a tough time. And, uh, you know, they cause turnovers too.